From wildernesses to tropical islands, the following are eight clans whose customs will arouse your interest. They're concealed in the most unfathomable corners of the earth or in the huge remote fields of Africa. Minuscule pockets of individuals whose traditions, dress and customs have remained decidedly behind the times. While they may just wear customary dress or utilize old hunting strategies on unique events nowadays, doubtlessly that individuals in these photos carry on with much nearer to their former lifestyle than the normal. Meet eight fantastic native clans and see what makes them special. No one, Huli Wigman tribe of Papua New Guinea. The Huli Wigman are an indigenous tribe from the southern highlands of Papua New Guinea, known for their unique cultural practices and striking traditional attire. The Huli people are believed to have lived in the highlands of Papua New Guinea for over a thousand years. Their oral history and archaeological evidence suggest a long-standing presence in the region. Traditionally, Huli society is organized around clan-based systems. They are horticulturists, practicing slash and burnt agriculture, and their staple crops include sweet potatoes and taro. The Huli wigmen are renowned for their elaborate wigs, made from human hair. Young men live in isolation for extended periods, growing their hair and crafting these wigs as part of an initiation rite. Besides wigs, the Huli decorate their bodies with bright colors, using natural pigments. This adornment is often complemented by facial paint and elaborate headdresses featuring bird feathers and flowers. Initiation rites for young men are intricate and involve rituals that symbolize their transition into adulthood and warrior status. Papua New Guinea came under German and British colonial rule in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but the Huli Highlands remained relatively isolated until the mid-20th century. The Huli were first contacted by Western explorers and missionaries in the 1930s. These encounters brought significant changes, including the introduction of Christianity, Western education, and new economic practices. Papua New Guinea gained independence from Australia in 1975. Since then, the Huli have experienced increasing exposure to modernity and globalization. Despite these changes, the Huli have managed to preserve much of their traditional culture. Efforts are ongoing to balance modern influences with the maintenance of their unique heritage. The introduction of the cash economy and new agricultural practices have altered traditional lifestyles. Many Huli now engage in commercial activities, such as coffee production. The Huli face challenges such as land disputes, environmental degradation, and the impacts of resource extraction industries. Social issues like education and health services remain areas of concern. The striking appearance and rich cultural practices of the Huli Wigman have made them a focal point for cultural tourism in Papua New Guinea. Tourists often visit to witness their traditional ceremonies and lifestyles. Documentaries, anthropological studies, and media portrayals have brought global attention to the Huli Wigman, contributing to a greater understanding and appreciation of their culture. The Huli Wigman stand as a testament to the resilience and adaptability of indigenous cultures in the face of rapid change, maintaining their vibrant traditions while navigating the complexities of the modern world. Number two, the Dogon tribe in West Africa. The Dogon tribe, residing primarily in the central plateau region of Mali in West Africa, has a rich and complex history that spans several centuries. The Dogon people have a rich oral tradition that traces their origins to a mythological homeland called the Mande. They believe their ancestors came from the West, specifically from the Mande-speaking regions, and migrated to their current location. Historically, it is believed that the Dogon migrated to the Bandiagara escarpment area around the 14th century. This migration was likely driven by the need to escape Islamization, slave raids, and conflicts from surrounding regions. The Bandiagara Escarpment provided natural fortification with its cliffs and caves, making it a strategic location for the Dogon to defend themselves against invaders. The Dogon developed sophisticated agricultural techniques, including terrace farming on the cliffs, to sustain their population in the arid environment. Dogon society is organized into villages, each led by a Hogon, a spiritual leader who holds both religious and political authority. The Dogon are renowned for their elaborate mask dances, wooden sculptures, and the Sigui ceremony, which takes place every 60 years to celebrate the cycle of the Sirius star system. One of the most fascinating aspects of Dogon culture is their knowledge of the Sirius star system. French anthropologist Marcel Graul and Germain Diderlin in the 1930s documented the Dogon's detailed knowledge of Sirius B, a white dwarf star invisible to the naked eye. This has led to much speculation about the source of their knowledge, ranging from ancient Egyptian connections to extraterrestrial influences. 
During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the Dogon region came under French colonial rule. The Dogon resisted colonial imposition and maintained much of their traditional way of life, despite external pressures. In contemporary times, the Dogon face various challenges, including land disputes, religious extremism from neighboring regions, and environmental pressures. Despite these challenges, they strive to preserve their unique cultural heritage. Dogon art, particularly their masks and sculptures, is highly valued in the global art market. Their artwork is often imbued with religious and social significance, depicting ancestral spirits and mythological themes. The Dogon area is a significant site for cultural tourism, attracting visitors interested in their traditional practices, architecture, and scenic landscapes. The Dogon tribe remains one of the most studied and admired ethnic groups in West Africa, known for their rich cultural traditions, spiritual beliefs, and resilience in the face of changing political and environmental landscapes. Number 3. Chimbu Skeleton Dancers Tribe of Papua New Guinea The Chimbu Skeleton Dancers are a cultural group from the Chimbu Simbu province of Papua New Guinea, known for their striking and unique traditional dance. The Skeleton Dancers tradition originates from the Chimbu province, located in the central highlands of Papua New Guinea. The Chimbu people have a rich cultural heritage, and the skeleton dance is one of their most distinctive and visually arresting cultural practices. The skeleton dance, known locally as Senguma, is performed to invoke fear and respect. It is believed to serve multiple purposes. The dancers paint their bodies to resemble skeletons, which is thought to scare away evil spirits and protect the community from harm. Historically, the dance was part of warrior traditions, meant to intimidate enemies and demonstrate the strength and courage of the warriors. The dance is performed during significant community events, including festivals, funerals, and initiation rites, reinforcing social cohesion and cultural identity. The dance involves intricate body movements that mimic the appearance of skeletons coming to life. The performers use white clay and charcoal to paint their bodies with skeletal patterns, creating a stark and eerie visual effect. The dance is accompanied by rhythmic drumming and chanting, adding to its dramatic impact. In contemporary times, the Chimbu skeleton dancers have gained international recognition and are often showcased in cultural festivals both within Papua New Guinea and abroad. The dance has become a symbol of the rich cultural diversity of Papua New Guinea and a point of pride for the Chimbu people. Efforts are ongoing to preserve this traditional dance amidst the influences of modernization and globalization. Cultural organizations and community leaders emphasize the importance of maintaining traditional practices and passing them down to younger generations. The Chimbu skeleton dancers remain a powerful representation of the Chimbu people's heritage, embodying their history, beliefs, and artistic expression. Number 4. Ninet Tribe of Siberia The Ninets are an indigenous people of northern Siberia, primarily inhabiting the Yamalo Ninets Autonomous Okrug and the Ninets Autonomous Okrug in Russia. Their history is deeply intertwined with the Arctic tundra and taiga environments they inhabit. The Ninets are believed to have descended from ancient nomadic groups that roamed the Siberian tundra and taiga thousands of years ago. Their ancestors were hunter-gatherers who gradually developed reindeer herding as a primary means of subsistence. By around 1000 AD, the Ninets had established reindeer herding as a cornerstone of their culture and economy. This practice enabled them to survive in the harsh Arctic climate, providing food, clothing and transportation. Throughout the medieval period, the Ninets interacted with other indigenous Siberian groups and with traders from the Russian principalities. These interactions were often centered around trade, particularly in furs, which were highly valued in Russia and Europe. In the 11th and 12th centuries, Russian traders and explorers began penetrating deeper into Siberia, establishing trade links with the Ninets and other indigenous peoples. By the 16th and 17th centuries, Russia had expanded its control over Siberia, including the lands inhabited by the Ninets. The introduction of the Yasak, a fur tax imposed on indigenous peoples, significantly impacted the Ninets' way of life. During the 18th and 19th centuries, the Russian Orthodox Church made efforts to convert the Ninets to Christianity. However, many Ninets retained their traditional animist beliefs, which are deeply connected to their natural environment. In the 1920s and 1930s, Soviet policies aimed at collectivization and sedentarization disrupted the traditional nomadic lifestyle of the Ninets the Soviet government attempted to settle the Ninets in permanent villages and collectivize their reindeer herds. The Soviet regime also suppressed traditional Ninets culture and language, promoting Russian as the dominant language and attempting to integrate the Ninets into the Soviet socialist system. 
Since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, there has been a cultural revival among the Nenets. Efforts to preserve and promote the Nenets language, traditions, and way of life have gained momentum. The Nenets face numerous challenges, including environmental threats from climate change and industrial activities, particularly oil and gas extraction in their territories. Despite these challenges, the Nenets continue to maintain their traditional lifestyle, particularly reindeer herding, while also engaging with modern society. Reindeer herding remains central to Nenets' culture and economy. It is not just an economic activity, but also a crucial aspect of their identity and cultural heritage. There are ongoing efforts to preserve and revitalize the Nenets' language and traditions. Schools in Nenets regions often include cultural education programs, and there are various cultural festivals celebrating Nenets' heritage. The Nenets have some degree of political representation through the autonomous Okrug's districts established for their governance. These regions provide a platform for advocating for their rights and interests within the Russian Federation. The Nenets' history is a testament to their resilience and adaptability in the face of changing political, social, and environmental landscapes. Their ability to maintain a distinct cultural identity while navigating the pressures of modernity continues to be a defining characteristic of the Nenets people. Number 5. Asaro Mud Men Tribe of Papua New Guinea The Asaro Mud Men are an indigenous group from the eastern highlands of Papua New Guinea, known for their distinctive and haunting appearance during traditional ceremonies. Their unique cultural practice involves wearing masks made of mud, along with covering their bodies in white clay, giving them a ghostly and striking look. The origins of the Asaro Mudmen are shrouded in local legend. According to tradition, the practice began when a group of Asaro villagers, defeated by an enemy tribe, fled into the Asaro River. To escape detection, they covered themselves in mud and emerged at nightfall, startling their enemies who mistook them for spirits or supernatural beings. This incident is said to have given rise to the practice of donning mud masks and body paint. The mud masks and white clay body paint serve both practical and symbolic purposes. Initially used to instill fear in enemies and avoid conflict, the masks and the associated rituals have become integral to the Asaro's cultural identity, representing themes of resilience, survival, and the supernatural. The masks worn by the mudmen are often elaborately designed with exaggerated features such as large eyes, menacing teeth, and horn-like appendages. Made from river clay and painted with natural pigments, each mask is unique, reflecting the creativity and artistic skills of its maker. The Asaro mudmen perform traditional dances during cultural festivals and ceremonies. These performances are slow and deliberate, often involving eerie movements that accentuate the ghostly appearance of the mud-clad dancers. The dances serve as a reenactment of their legendary origins and as a display of their rich cultural heritage. In the modern era, the Asaro mudmen have become a symbol of cultural pride and resilience. Efforts are made by the community and cultural organizations to preserve and promote their unique traditions, ensuring that the younger generations understand and continue these practices. The enigmatic and visually striking appearance of the mudmen has attracted considerable attention from tourists and researchers alike. The Asaro Mudmen often perform at cultural festivals in Papua New Guinea and occasionally abroad, sharing their heritage with a global audience. Tourism has become an important source of income, helping to support the community and fund cultural preservation initiatives. While the influx of tourism and external interest has brought economic benefits, it has also posed challenges. The community must balance the preservation of their traditions with the demands of a global audience often adapting performances for commercial purposes while striving to maintain authenticity. The Asaro Mudmen of Papua New Guinea embody a rich cultural legacy rooted in myth, artistic expression, and a deep connection to their ancestral traditions. Their distinctive mud masks and performances continue to captivate and intrigue, serving as a testament to the resilience and creativity of the Asaro people. As they navigate the complexities of the modern world, the Mudmen stand as a powerful reminder of the enduring importance of cultural heritage and identity. Number 6. Himba Herders Tribe of Namibia The Himba are an indigenous people living in the northern region of Namibia, particularly in the Kunin region formerly Kakoland, and a smaller number in southern Angola. They are a semi-nomadic, pastoralist tribe known for their unique cultural practices and distinctive appearance. The Himba are descendants of the Herero people, and are believed to have migrated from the Great Lakes region of East Africa to Namibia around the 16th century. They originally settled in what is now Namibia and Angola, where they adapted to the harsh desert environment. 
In the late 19th century, the Himba and Herero split into distinct groups. This separation was influenced by various factors, including conflicts, environmental challenges, and colonial pressures. While the Herero became more settled and engaged in agriculture and trade, the Himba retained their traditional pastoralist lifestyle, focusing on cattle herding. During the German colonial period 1884 to 1915, the Himba experienced significant upheaval. The colonial administration imposed taxes and attempted to control their movements, leading to resistance and occasional conflicts. The Ovam Banderu, a subgroup closely related to the Himba and Herero, were also affected by these colonial policies. The early 20th century brought additional hardships for the Himba. The region suffered from severe droughts, which decimated their cattle herds, a primary source of wealth and sustenance. Additionally, the South African administration, which took over from the Germans after World War I, continued to impose policies that disrupted traditional Himba life. Despite these challenges, the Himba have managed to preserve much of their traditional culture. They are known for their distinctive hairstyles, adorned with okra and butterfat, and their elaborate jewelry. The Himba women are particularly noted for their skin, which they cover with a mixture of butterfat and red ochre, giving them a characteristic reddish hue. In recent decades, the Himba have gained international attention, largely due to their unique cultural practices. This has led to increased tourism in their region, which has brought both opportunities and challenges. While tourism provides a source of income, it also poses risks to their traditional way of life. Today, the Himba face various modern challenges, including land rights issues, climate change impacts, and the pressures of modernization. Efforts are ongoing to balance development and cultural preservation, ensuring that the Himba can maintain their unique identity while adapting to changing circumstances. The Himba continue to be a symbol of cultural resilience and adaptability, maintaining their traditional practices in the face of significant external pressures. Number seven, Kazakh Golden Eagle Hunters of Mongolia. The tradition of hunting with golden eagles among the Kazakh people in Mongolia is a rich cultural practice that dates back thousands of years. The Kazakh people, originally nomadic tribes from Central Asia, have a long history of using birds of prey for hunting. This practice is believed to have originated over 6,000 years ago, with evidence found in ancient petroglyphs and artifacts. The Kazakhs migrated to the Altai Mountains in Western Mongolia during the 19th century, fleeing from the expansion of the Russian Empire. They brought with them their customs, including eagle hunting. Eagle hunting, known as Burka Chilik, is more than a hunting practice, it is a cultural and spiritual tradition. It involves capturing and training golden eagles to hunt small mammals and foxes in the harsh mountainous terrain. The process of training an eagle is intricate and involves capturing a young eagle, often from the nest, and nurturing a bond between the bird and its trainer, known as a Burkuchi. The training includes conditioning the eagle to hunt and return to the hunter. Despite modernization and the decline of many traditional practices, eagle hunting has persisted among the Kazakh communities in Mongolia. It serves as a symbol of cultural identity and heritage. Established in 1999, the annual Golden Eagle Festival in Bayan Olji province showcases this ancient tradition. The festival attracts international attention and tourists, helping to preserve and promote the practice. In Kazakh culture, eagle hunters are highly respected. The tradition is typically passed down through generations, with fathers teaching sons the skills and techniques required. Historically, eagle hunting has been a male-dominated practice, but in recent years, women have also started to participate, gaining recognition and challenging traditional gender roles. The practice faces challenges from environmental changes, economic pressures, and the younger generation's shift towards modern lifestyles. However, efforts to promote ecotourism and cultural heritage have provided new avenues for sustaining the tradition. UNESCO recognized the cultural heritage of eagle hunting by including it in its list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2010. This recognition has helped garner support for its preservation. In conclusion, the tradition of golden eagle hunting among the Kazakh people in Mongolia is a profound example of human-animal partnership and cultural resilience. It continues to be a vital part of Kazakh identity and heritage, adapting to modern times while retaining its ancient roots. And finally, number eight, Bayaka Tribe of Central African Republic. The Bayaka, also known as the AKA, are an indigenous group of hunter-gatherers residing in the Central African Republic Car and surrounding regions, including parts of the Republic of Congo and Cameroon. 
The Bayaka are one of several groups collectively known as pygmies, indigenous peoples of the Central African rainforests. Their history is ancient, possibly dating back tens of thousands of years. They are considered some of the earliest inhabitants of Central Africa. Traditionally, the Bayaka were nomadic hunter-gatherers, living in small, mobile bands. They relied on the rich biodiversity of the rainforest for sustenance, hunting game, fishing, and gathering wild plants, fruits, and honey. The Bayaka maintain an egalitarian social structure with minimal hierarchy. Decisions are often made collectively, and there is a strong emphasis on sharing and cooperation. Their culture is rich in oral traditions, songs, and dances. Music, particularly polyphonic singing and the use of traditional instruments, plays a central role in their social and spiritual life. The Bayaka have a deep spiritual connection to the forest, which they view as a living entity. They believe in a variety of spirits and deities associated with natural elements and animals. During the colonial period, the Bayaka, like many indigenous groups, faced disruption to their traditional way of life. Colonial administrations often viewed their nomadic lifestyle as backward and attempted to settle them. After the Central African Republic gained independence in 1960, the Bayaka continued to face challenges, including land encroachment by logging companies and agricultural expansion, which threatened their traditional territories and resources. In contemporary times, the Bayaka have been increasingly marginalized. Their land rights are often ignored, leading to displacement. This marginalization has led to socioeconomic challenges, including poverty and limited access to health care and education. Various international organizations and NGOs have advocated for the rights of the Bayaka, focusing on issues such as land rights, preservation of their cultural heritage, and protection from exploitation and abuse. Despite these challenges, the Bayaka have shown remarkable resilience. Some have adapted by engaging in wage labor, crafts, and participating in ecotourism and conservation projects aimed at preserving their knowledge of the forest. The Bayaka's deep knowledge of the rainforest's flora and fauna is invaluable for biodiversity conservation. Their sustainable hunting and gathering practices have maintained ecological balance for generations. Efforts to recognize and protect the cultural heritage of the Bayaka have gained international attention. Documentaries, research, and cultural exchange programs have highlighted their rich cultural legacy and the need for preservation. The future of the Bayaka depends on balancing development with the preservation of their cultural and environmental heritage. Sustainable development initiatives that involve the Bayaka in decision-making processes are crucial. Empowering the Bayaka through education and advocacy is essential for their self-determination. Supporting their rights to land and cultural practices will help ensure their survival and prosperity in a rapidly changing world. In conclusion, the Bayaka tribe's history is one of deep-rooted tradition and profound connection to the Central African rainforest. Despite facing significant challenges, their resilience and rich cultural heritage continue to inspire efforts for their preservation and recognition.